Good afternoon and namaskar everyone. Today I, Janvi Tandon from Bal Bharti Public School, Noida, India, would like to welcome you all to the video conference on the occasion of World Tourism Day, which would be celebrated on 27th September. Its aim is to foster awareness among the global community of tourism's social, culture, electro economic, political, and the value that it can give to the to reaching the sustainable goals. Before starting, I would like to extend a hearty welcome to our principal ma'am, Ms. Asha Prabhakar, Vice Principal, Ms. Anupama Motwani, Headmistress ma'am, Ms. Vinya Pujari, other members and dignitaries. I'm sure today each one of us would love interacting with each other and enjoy taking a virtual tour of Kazakhstan as well as India. Initiating today's interaction, I would like to request the students from Kazakhstan to take over. The platform is all yours. Yeah. 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 Hi everyone, cordial greetings from Kazakhstan and Nazarbayev Intellectual School in Taldekurgan to the headmistress of Bal Bharati School in Noida, uh, Vinaya Ma'am, and the vice principal of school Anupama Ma'am, and the head librarian of the school Abha Ma'am. First of all, we would like to congratulate everyone on the day of tourism. And uh, Kazakhstan um, is a country located in Central Asia, so maybe that's why um, there are a lot of lovely places in Kazakhstan. Its attraction, natural heritage is unique. So our country brings beauty of Asia and Europe together. So we would like uh, to start with a video uh, showing the beauty of Kazakhstan's nature and city architecture. Thank you. 
We hope that when the virus ceases to be dangerous, we will travel to the places that we'll know about today. Um, so we will continue our presentation with our capital city, Nur Sultan, that have a place in our hearts. So Aslan, Tohjan, and Rai will present it. Либо же, как 
Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, Mama, it's visible. Expo 2017. In 2017, the capital of Kazakhstan hosted an expo exhibition themes Future Energy. Nur Alem National Pavilion uh, Pavilion is an after ex exhibition heritage, now serving as a museum of future energy in Kazakhstan. Its unique spherical shape was in the spotlight before the opening of the exhibition and still attracts much attention. The museum is an eight-story building. Each floor is dedicated to a different theme. Solar power, wind power, space power, bioenergy, hydropower, kinetic energy, national pavilion, and future Astana. Now that the exhibition is over, the pavilion of Kazakhstan, Nur Alem, the largest spherical building in the world, has undoubtedly become one of the main attractions of Astana. It's a new symbol of future energy in Kazakhstan. So the next place is Hazret Sultan, which means Holy Sultan, the main mosque of Nur Sultan, which ranks second in size in all of Central Asia. The first is Turkmen Bashiruhi. The capacity of the temple is up to 10,000 people. It was built in uh, 2012 in the style of classic Islam, Islamic architecture. Hazret Sultan is a real work of urban planning art, which occupies a special place among the city sites. The minarets of the mosque reach 63 meters in height, the life of Muhammad on earth. The main dome is 40 meters, the age when Allah appeared to Muhammad. And Kazakhstan is among the largest countries in the world by area. You need to travel thousands of kilometers to visit all cities and see every attraction. But thanks to the Atamiken Etna Memorial Complex, you can see them all in one place. The concept of museum is quite unusual. Atamiken is made in the form of map, on which the cities and the regions of the country are located on reduced scale. That's it. It's a miniature model of Kazakhstan. The name of the complex means land of ancestors. Here in an area equal to two football fields, there are smaller copies of over 200 architectural structures and the monuments of Kazakhstan, as well as forests, mountains, and hills. In addition, there is a stage for various festivals, celebrations, and performances. So, Nazarbayev University. Nazarbayev University was founded by the first president of Republic of Kazakhstan, the Basin of Sultan Nazarbayev. The university aims to de develop into a research university of international renown combining education, research and innovation. Nazarbayev University educates the next generation of leaders of the Republic of Kazakhstan in science, public administration and various professions, this contributing to the future development of the country. So, um, the next historic city, which is full of sacred mausoleums, Turkestan, will be presented by Aknor and Arujan. So, so hi guys, we're going to talk about Turkestan. Turkestan is a hero city with a great history dating back more than one and a half thousand years. Together with such medieval cities as Sonak, Sauran, Sunak, Turkestan is also part of our rich history and culture. Uh, Turkestan is one of the oldest cities in Central Asia and Kazakhstan. The first information about this city is available in written sources dating from the first nine centuries. The city was called Shavkar. It is known that uh, Turkestan was a major educational center in the Middle Ages. In its cultural life, a great place uh, was occupied by the work of religious poets as well as Islamic preachers. Among them are Ahmed Yassawi, his student Suleiman Bakargani, Ahmed Jugniki, and Yusuf Balasaguni. 
Since the beginning of the 12th century, Turkestan has become the capital of Kazakh Khanate, that is the Kazakh state. The settled relations between Kazakhstan and Russia embassies went from Turkestan to Russia, from Russia to Turkestan. Uh, tourism centers. Now let's talk about centers that provide information to tourists regarding tourism. The information center on the tourism center uh, of the above mentioned city department in, of the entrepreneurship and uh, tourism under the mayor's office of the city operates. Uh, since August 2016, the center has been operating in four languages, Kazakh, Russia, English and Turkish. So, Muslim of Kojahmed Yassawi. The Muslim um, of Kojahmed Yassawi in the town of Yassa, now Turkestan, was built at the time of Timur from 1389 to 1405. After the construction of the Muslim of Kojahmed Yassawi, Turkestan became the religious center of all the Turkic people and became known as Little Mecca. The legend of the mausoleum. According to the legend by order of Tamerlan, the construction of, of, uh, of a mosque began over the grave of Hoja Ahmed Yassawi. All attempts to build was failed. A strong storm demolished them. According to the, another version, the appearance of a green bull which destroyed everything. As the saint appeared uh, in Timur's dream, he said that first it was necessary to build a mausoleum over the grave of Saint Arstambab and then of, over the grave of Hoja Ahmed Yassawi. Timur did so. Therefore, pilgrims uh, first visit the Muslim of Arstambab and then the Muslim of Hoja Ahmed Yassawi. Next is the intimate ruins of Soran. The name of the settlement is found in written sources dating back to the 10th century because several centuries ago it was a very advanced municipality for that time and an important administrative unit for medieval political life. An interesting fact remains that there were underground water pipelines in the city with a total length of almost 110 kilometers. Excavation in Sauran continues to this day. Today, archaeologists are looking for a palace where the ruler lived uh, and the suburban mosque where sacrifices were held. In the future, they plan to open a huge open air museum on the side of the city and thereby breathe new life into the city. Sauran functioned until the beginning of the 18th century and then the city was completely destroyed. It's difficult for historians to give an answer to why people left the city. There are two versions. According to the first, the city fell after the Great Silk Road ceased to function. Caravans stopped traveling on the steppe and the city became desolate. Historians believe that the Jungarian invasion also played a big role in this. According to the second version, the lack of clean water contributed to the fall of the city. The ancient canals could no longer provide the growing population with a necessary volume, and people began to move to the nearest city, Turkestan. 155.5 thousand people live in modern Turkestan. Tourists from the Kazakhstan and all over the world come to the city every year. Last year, the figure exceeded uh, 1 million and continues to grow. And thank you for your attention. Bye bye. bye. So, uh, next, Kumba and I will tell you about Kapsharai and Kainde, uh, which are located near Alman City. <laughs> okay. Okay, the first place is a fabulous place that attracts not only Almaty residents but also tourists from around the world. Uh, Kainde is a lake in Almaty region of Kazakhstan, one of the gorges of the Kazakhstan. In Kazakh, Kainde means a mountain birch tree. The lake was named in Kainde because of the large birch pole that is located by the Kainde. The uh, lake was formed recently in the early 20th century. In 1911, the town of Vietnam and its surroundings were shaken by a power of the earthquake and the historic landslide to the first The water flooded the part of the porch, calmed down, and after a while, the beautiful river was a large forest in time. Um, lake Kanda is always open to tourists and is in some of the most beautiful mountain lake. Therefore, the lake is popular among divers. Uh, those who have been. Uh, um, 
Uh, can you turn off the microphone, please? Ah, okay. Uh, I will continue. Therefore, the lake is popular among divers. Those who have been in this lake say that despite the ceiling of birds and barely audible wind blowing, comes the realization of what is a real silence, harmony, and peace. Kainza has a perfect combination of mountains, water, and sky. And at night, the view of starry sky is breathtaking. That is why this place is must-see. So let us show you a video about Kainza. Yeah. Тут не нажимается, не выходит. Мышь какой-то такая. Закрыт доступ. И у нас там кандилайк. Кандилайк. А где звук? Да. А вы сделали, да, поделиться? Да, Спроси, не видно. Can you see the screen? Yes. And uh, hear the video? Um, could you just switch it to the screen? <laughs> Okay, so Oops. Закрыть сначала доступ делаете, а потом вновь расшариваете. Вот это да, убери, а потом вновь да, добавляешь. Вот убираешь какие. Сейчас, если я не ошибаюсь, делить вот этим экраном, да? Да. Угол ничего нет. Не нажимаем. Наташа, вам нужно продолжить, да? Возможно, без презентации. So, uh, the next is Kapchaga Reservoir. It's only 48 years old, but its history is already full of terrible myth. So, who has not heard of huge catfish devouring gaping or death funeral that drag people to the bottom? And the legend of the man eating catfish uh, has existed for more than one century. And the mention of a huge fish attacking people can be found even in old Kazakh fairy tales. And all Almaty residents probably heard in childhood tales um, about cannibalistic catfish living in Kapshagai, in whose uh, stomachs uh, they find not only the remains of animals, but also people. But all these, of course, are urban legends. So in fact, catfish are very shy fish. So they are unlike to appear in areas where people swim. So you can have fun in great place as long as you want. And there are many recreation centers in Kapshagai where you can swim, eat, have fun, and go yachting. And uh, even if Kapshagai is a huge reservoir, it's only 
Uh, it's a very, its nature is very fascinating. And uh, in winter, uh, ice flows that form waves and uh, all layers of ice are very breathtaking. And uh, in summer, far from the beach, uh, because of the parity of the water, you can even see stones and uh, fish uh, swimming in the water. Even when you swim, you can feel uh, algae and the fish uh, tickling at your feet. When you are yachting at dawn or at dusk, you can feel the fresh smell and the wind, which you uh, feel free like summer breeze. So uh, now uh, I want to show you a video. It's summer Kapshagai. Bright eyes that inspire. Messages that forge. Can you hear and see the video? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. we can. If possible, can you do it on full screen? The last video. Yeah. It's the winter of Shavai. So next, another charming place that full of mist is Burabai and Ultra Best Mountain, which translates as even an arrow does not reach the top. So Ayhanam and Aysana will tell you about this place. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Burabai and Kokshitao. Burabai attracts tourists with picturesque landscapes and wide opportunities for recreation. The region is called Kazakhstan in Switzerland for its unique climates. Can you see our presentation? Yes, it's visible. Yes, it's visible. Thank you. 
Um, the region is called Kazakhstan in Switzerland for its unique climates and natural resources. For those who go to Burabay, the legends about these places will tell about the origin of many attractions, culture and life of the local people. There is even a legend about the name of this area. <coughs> Legend Burabaya. Legend has it that in ancient times a large white camel, Bura, lived in these places. The sacred animal was distinguished by strength and beauty. His homeland was the forest of uh, Mount Kokshital, but every afternoon he went down to the silver lake to drink water. Local residents treated the camel with respect because it protected their lives. Bura felt the approach of strangers and notified people about this with a loud cry. Therefore, for many Many years the inhabitants of the region uh, lived in freedom and peace. Once in these places, robbers appeared who robbed and killed people, animals, and birds. Bura warned everyone about their approach with a loud cry. This helped save many innocent uh, lives, but the robbers realized who was the cause of their failure. They set a trap for the camel uh, when he once again went down to drink water. The leader of the robbers shot the animal uh, in the chest. The arrow came out through one of Bura's hams. Sensing the approach of death, the sacred animal went down to the lake where it turned to stone. In honor uh, of the noble camel, this places began to be called Burabai. The silver lake with the purest water was named Burabai. According to legend, the frozen camel remained forever in its native places, turning into a mountain uh, was height is almost 600 meters. Local residents see in it the outlines of a petrified animal, a deadly arrow sticking out of its hump. So next is Okjepes and Jumaktas. Many centuries ago, Abulai Khan lived in this part who was famous for his victories. From another campaign, he came with a large number of trophies, among which was a young Kalmak prisoner. The king divided the spoils between his people, but could not decide who would marry the girl. Then he allowed the Kalmak woman to choose her own groom. The girl climbed to the top of the cliff and hung her kerchief there. She asked the Khan to give, uh, to give her for the warrior whose arrow will reach him. Many horsemen took part in the competition, but no one coped with the task. Then Han got angry and ordered the girl to come down, but the young Kalmak woman chose freedom. So she threw herself from the top of the hill down into the blue waters of Lake Oriyakul. Legend has it that at the place of the girl fall after a while, the Jumbachtas rock appeared, located in the northern parts of Lake Burabai. From different sides, its shape has different outlines. Someone sees in her mysterious sphinx, other a girl with long hair. Many legends are associated with the origin of the rock. Next is Ablai Hans Glade. One of the most popular sites of Burabai is Ablai Hans Glade. This place is famous for its energy and picturesque landscapes. It's believed that the body of person who, who has visited the meadow rejuvenates and the state of health improves. According to the legends, Ablai Khan was one of the most powerful and formidable rulers. His pattern was a yellow camel. If on the way to battle the animal lay head first, then the ruler was sure to win. The throne of Ablai Khan, made of marble steps, is located in the clearing later. A seal was erected here in honor of the great ruler. In Burabai, there is a museum of Ablai Khan and library too. <laughs> Finally, we want to show you a video about Burabai. Let's see it. Как поделить видео? Так, подожди. Вот тут что-то видео нету. Мы закроем. Что ты ваше видео? Мы вышли. Нет, не нашли. О, боже, Сначала плюсик сделать и камеру. Вы же поделиться хотите? Да. Ну куда вы полезли? Вот же она. Да. Вот-вот, на самом деле. Этап, давай лучше.
Посмотрим Нет, там. Нет, хотя бы не выйдет у вас. Entire screen сделайте. Делайте entire. Your entire screen, давай первый. Это всем экран, да. Сейчас пойдем туда, кинь, потом вот это нажми прямо на него. И на весь экран. И на весь экран. Сделайте еще этот. Нет, не надо, не надо. Что? Вот сюда. Вы, вы, вы. Качество видео просто лучше. Надо было на все четыре. Legends revive the hard rocks, opening them from the unexpected side. Pine trees will invade the dance moves, luring you deep. The lakes will captivate you by their beauty. Distant ancestral events at arm's reach. Sunrise by the lake. What could be more beautiful? I want to disappear into this beauty. Knowing that these places have not been seen by your loved ones is disturbing. Want to shout. I want to tell everyone and show them the majestic Butter Bay. And you know, photographs can't convey the beauty of nature. And it's not another weekend getaway. It's something special. It'll take a place under your heart forever. And it'll sound like a nice memory when you think about resting, running away from the fuss, and suddenly you're in the pursuit of inspiration. Butter Bay, once is enough, and life will never be the same. You're gonna come back here again and again to experience that very first sense of delight in the incredible nature. Thank you for your attention. Generally, Burabai is a land of flags and rocks. Burabai legends introduce tourists to the history of the origin of many local attractions. Beautiful legends that are passed uh, down from generation to generation allow you to look at the nature of the region with a different look. Thanks for your attention. Okay, I believe you enjoyed our presentation uh, and the hour to which you have um, discovered many new places where you can travel later. So come to Kazakhstan and uh, see each beauties uh, with your own eyes and uh, you will definitely not regret your stay. Thank you so much. It was lovely listening to you all. And thank you for sharing such beautiful facts about Kazakhstan with us. And along with giving us a look into amazing places like Candy Lake, Kapsage, and Burabai. Moving forward, I would like to request Sangini to play the video made by our fellow schoolmates. After all, dance is the hidden language of the soul. You dance love, and you dance joy, and you dance dreams.
has never been just for entertainment. It's a way of evolving an individual human being into a universal entity. Things are beautiful when there is unity. Then what makes music beautiful? The answer is harmony. Then what is harmony? It's unity. Yes, India, which is a diverse country. But still, its traditions and cultures are tied together in order to make it possible to have unity in diversity. Every state of this country has its unique and beautiful music form. Let us see some of these. Okay, so let's see a clip of beautiful music of India. <laughs> Okay, so you saw various music forms in India and I am sure your experience must have been great. And let me tell you one more thing that Indian dance forms are equally fantastic as that of music. So be ready to have a look on different dance forms in India. <laughs> Thank you, friends, for sharing how music and dance going to come. Now, let's take a look into Indian cuisines. Namaskar. The most famous Indian food. Spicy, rich, flavorful, and diverse are terms that are frequently used to describe our Indian food. Punjab. Punjabi cuisines are not only popular in India, but in UK, Canada too. The most popular food of Punjab is Makke ki roti and sarso da saag, chole bhature, rajma chawal, lassi, amritsari kulchas. Gujarat. Gujarat has an extensive coastline with a lot of seafood available. Traditional Gujarati food is adored for its individual flavor that maintains an interesting balance between spices and sweetness. Some of the popular dishes are Dhokla, Khandvi, Dhansak and Gujarati Kari. Maharashtra Maharashtra food is considered more austere than others because they use mild spices in dishes. Some of the popular dishes of Maharashtra are Bada Pao, Pao Bhaji, Shrikand, Thali Peed, Puran Poli and Modak. Delhi Delhi, the heart of foodies. 
food culture in delhi is a mixture of north indian and punjabi food and mouth watering street food the real flavor of delhi street food lies in the chaat the famous dishes are parathas biryani momos dal makhani chole bhature bihar in bihar more importance is given to seasonal food as they are found in abundance bihar is excessively rich in taste and austere in the way it prepared some of the popular dishes of bihar are litti chokha sattu paratha jhal murhi khaja tilkut rajasthan rajasthan is colorful not only in tourism but also in mouth watering cuisines most dishes complement spices with sweetness famous dishes of rajasthan are dal bati pyaaz kachori malai ghevar gatte ki sabzi kalakan tamil nadu tamil nadu is known for a wide variety of delicious food for both vegetarians and non vegetarians famous dishes are dosa and idli sambar pongal coconut chutney appam rasam chatinad chicken thank you and over to janvi thank you and thank you for letting us know how food music and dance truly fills our life with great vibrance moving forward culture is the widening of the mind and of the spirit India is truly synonymous with the mosaic of cultures and festivities. Festivity brings alive the spirit of people staying in India. So today we would like to give you all a glimpse of what it feels like being in India during the times of celebration. Starting with Northern India. North India can be called the hub of festivities, especially during the winter months. with festivals ranging from holi diwali to guru purab and eid it surely would make you dive into immense euphoria with this i would like to give you a peek into two of the many amazing festivals celebrated here the first one being holi celebrated around march and april it literally is the festival of colors it celebrates the arrival of spring the end of winter the blossoming of love and for many it's a festive day to meet others play and laugh forget and forgive and repair broken relationships it is indeed a beautiful festival the next one is a festival full of sweet childhood memories a sky full of fireworks mouth full of sweets house full of diyas and a heart full of joy the festival of lights diwali which for some also coincides with harvest and new year celebrations it's a festival of new beginnings and the triumph of good over evil and light over darkness irrespective of their religions many people of india celebrate this glamorous festival people wear their finest clothes perform worship ceremonies of lakshmi the goddess of prosperity and wealth and also partake in family feasts now over to pranjal for the south indian festivals thank you janvi namaskar now i would like to discuss about the festivals that are celebrated in south india basically in each of their festivals they wear they dress up well and decorate their house with flowers onam onam is an annual hindu harvest festival celebrated in the indian state of kerala a major annual event of kerala days It is the most official festival of the state and includes a spectrum of cultural events drawing from Hindu legends. Onam commemorates King Mahabali. So in this festival a boat race is conducted and the people of Kerala dress up well for a major annual event especially the women wear a special type of sari known as pattu sari and they decorate their house by making rangolis uh, by using petals of flowers. Pongal Pongal is a harvesting festival or thanksgiving festival this festival is celebrated to thank the sun god and lord indra for helping farmers in getting better yielding crops during the festival people reject old belongings and welcome new stuff so in this festival the people thanks uh, thanks the sun god and lord indra for helping farmers so that they get the better yielding in crops 
This festival is celebrated in Tamil Nadu. Karaga festival. Karaga is a folk dance of Karnataka which originated as a ritual dedicated as known in these parts as Frog Patama. The ritual is performed on a full moon day. The ritual pot filled with water and adorned with decorations several feet high is carried by the priest. So in this festival, the priest carry the ritual pot filled with water on their head, which is fully decorated and perform a folk dance on the full moon day. This dance is known as Karaga. Now I would like to hand it over to Nukur to talk about the Eastern Indian festivals. Namaste everyone. Now I will be talking about Eastern Indian festival. Eastern India, just like the rest of the India, is a region that is extremely rich in heritage and culture. It is known for having different sets of traditions and customs for every occasion. A culture to cherish, this region is the epicenter of, for a set of joyous customary festivals. So we will now be looking at a few festivals of Eastern India. The first one being Durga Puja. It is traditionally held for 10 days in the month of September-October and it celebrates the victory of Goddess Durga over demon king Mahishasura in the Hindu mythology. It is particularly celebrated in the Indian states of West Bengal and Assam. These are what the celebrations look like. Next we have Buddha Purnima, the most important festival of the Buddha community. It is the celebration of Gautam Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. It was celebrated on May 26 this year. It is celebrated by praying, meditating, fasting and discussing the teachings of Buddha. There is also a tradition of taking dip in River Ganga, which was not followed this year because of COVID-19 restrictions. Next, we have Mahavi Jayanti, which is a similar festival for the Jain community. It is celebrated in the memory of last spiritual teacher of Jainism, that is Lord Mahavira. A Rath Yatra, something which looks like this, is carried out with an idol of Lord Mahavira. Next, we have Bihu festival, the most important festival of Assam. It marks the beginning of Assamese New Year and harvest season. Celebrated with melodious folk songs and traditional ty uh, types of dance, there are three types of Bihu. One celebrated during April called the Rangoli or Bohag Bihu. One celebrated during October called the Kangali or Kati Bihu. And one celebrated during January called the Bugali or Mag Bihu. Now we would like to show you a short dance clip of Bihu dance. festival we have is the Hornbill festival which is named after Nagaland's most admired bird the Hornbill. It is celebrated to spread unity and promote cultural practices of tribes of the state. Also known as the festival of festivals, it is a powerful representation of the Naga culture through traditional music, dance and performances. A similar festival called the Bangala also known as the 100 drums festival is celebrated in Meghalaya by the Garos community. It is celebrated for around two to seven days. Their tribals offer their sacrifices to their main deity, the sun god. People young and old dressed in the colorful costumes with feathered headgears dance to the tune of music played on long oval shaped drums. Finally, we have the Zero Festival celebrated in Arunachal Pradesh, hosted by the Apatani tribe. It is one of the greatest outdoor songs event in the nation, where a combination of 30 indie bands from around the world and top individual acts from throughout the Northeast India come and perform. Now we'll be handing over the presentation to Pragya for Western India Festivals. Thank you. Namaste. West India celebrates numerous festivals throughout the year. 
these festivals are diverse due to different religious and cultural amalgamation in indian society and we indians extremely value our festival and celebrate them with joy and harmony west india is magnet attraction for tourists especially for festival so here we will be discussing four famous festival of west india first festival we have is ganesh chaturthi ganesh chaturthi also called vinayaka chaturthi in hinduism 10 day festival marking the birth of elephant headed deity ganesha the god of prosperity and wisdom it begins on the fourth day of chaturthi of the month of bhadrapad that is august to september the sixth month of hindu calendar the festival begins with people bringing clay idols of lord ganesha to their house and installing them in worship places on the first day of ganesh chaturthi they clean the house wear new clothes decorate the house with flowers and rangoli before starting the prayer the festival bring a sense of joy among the people as the entire community friends and family gather and join in the auspicious celebration they essentially pray to lord ganesha to receive his blessing for the good health and well being of their family the festival is celebrated for 10 days at end of which the idol is immersed in the large water body the second festival we have is the teej festival this is festival this festival is an all women celebration we are married and unmarried women seek the blessing of goddess parvati women fast on this festival for the well being and long life of their husbands and it's a three day festival on the occasion of teej festival women observe a fast and pray through the night in the morning they bathe and dress in red sari and fine jewelry to worship goddess parvati the major attraction of teej festival are the swings that are fixed to the branches of large trees on which the women take turns to enjoy swinging special songs are sung and the women decorate their hands with henna married daughters are presented with sweets clothes and by their mothers the girls engaged to be married receive gifts of henna bangle clothes and sweets from the mother in laws Although the festival is celebrated across the length and breadth of the country but Jaipur is an ideal place to see the celebration of Teej a two day procession is held in the city that is a worth watch Moving on to Christmas festival Christmas is celebrated on 25th December it is holiday to celebrate the birth of Jesus the son of god Goa is home to over 400 churches big and small There is no better way to celebrate Christmas in Goa than by attending a midnight mass service. The Basilica of Bom Jesus and Immaculate Conception Church are good option. Say a prayer, give thanks for your blessing, and join other in singing hymns and carols. Next, Navratri, also called Shar Navratri for and Navratri, is a major Hindu festival that is celebrated by Hindus around the world. and in india over span of nine nights post monsoon autumn it is essentially a celebration of good over evil navratri in gujarat means nine night festival full of dance music and lot of fun the dance from that is the dance that is performed during navratri is ras garba which is also sometimes followed by dandiya the atmosphere during the festival is eclectic and joyful thank you and now over to janvi Thank you. Isn't that amazing? Well, thank you friends for sharing those alluring festivals with all of us. Now, let's take a look into India's rich cultural heritage, the monuments. Namaskar. Talking about monuments, the Taj Mahal is easily one of the first on anyone's bucket list. Being one of the seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal is distinguished as the finest example of Mughal architecture, a blend of Indian, Persian and Islamic styles. Made of white so pure that it looks like a piece of the clouds, its marble reflects the sky. So the monument changes colors throughout the day. 
the heart wrenching story behind the taj only makes it better after the devastating death of his wife mumtaz mehr shah jahan built this beautiful tomb to represent his vision of a home in paradise with the construction spanning over 22 years people material and a thousand elephants from all over asia being involved the king put his all in this glorious epitome of love and beauty despite all this i promise you that these stories all fall short when compared to the eternal beauty when you're standing in front of the palace kripya hamare desh hai that means come visit our country now once we take you to a tour of the magnificent golden temple sat sri akal the world famous golden temple built in 1604 originally known as shri harmandir sahib is located in punjab amritsar which is in the northwestern part of the subcontinent it is named as the golden temple because of the 500 kg of pure gold covering most of its structure the golden temple is considered as the holiest temple for the sikh community apart from this it is also surrounded by a sacred pond consisting of amrit meaning the nectar of immortality upon which the name amritsar has been derived moving ahead the temple is known for its langar which serves food to a massive number of people a day the architecture too is simply marvelous and a treat to the eyes the main structure is three stories high the bridge facing front is decorated with repeated cuspid arches at the top of the first floor Four feet high parapets rise on all, and lastly, a low, fluted golden temple dome sits at the top, making this holy and spiritual monument a center of attraction for tourists across the globe. Sade desh aao, that means come visit our country. Now, Arya will take you a tour to the Hawa Mahal. Khamba Khan, the Hawa Mahal in Jaipur is considered. as one of the most iconic attractions of the city the five story building looks like a honeycomb and is always windy inside owing to the numerous windows and jharokhas because of this amazing ventilation the palace was named as the hawa mahal which literally translates into palace of winds the main purpose of the construction was to allow the ladies of the royal family and the court to see the busy streets of Johari Bazaar without being seen themselves. The Hawa Mahal is the tallest building in the world that has been built without a foundation with a carved architecture and pyramidal shape which means that 87 degree angle has helped it to stay erected for centuries. The palace is dedicated to Lord Krishna as it is said to resemble his crown. Moreover, The Hawa Mahal is the marvelous mixture of culture and architecture that reflects the Hindu Rajput and Islamic Mughal architectural style perfectly. Now, as the local says, "Hamare desh aao," मतलब please visit our country. Now, Ritika will take you over to a virtual tour to Alora Caves. Namaskar. In 1819, a British army officer unintentionally stumbled upon these caves during his hunting expedition. This breathtaking monument is known as the Ellora Caves. Images of it do no justice to its actual beauty and glory. The caves are famous for their amazing architecture and style. They are man-made temples cut into an enormous stonework hillside, constructed by generations of Jain. Buddhist and Hindu monks. Ellora caves comprise of 34 cave temples from the period 6th and 11th centuries AD. The Kailash temple in cave number 16 is the most outstanding of all. The caves in Ellora are a wonderful amalgamation of Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist cultures. Amazingly, Um the most unbelievable fact about these caves is the incredible rock cut sculptures made by hands with just a rock and a chisel and a hammer. The skill of the myriad unknown Indian artists at these caves astounds and fascinates all who lay eyes upon it. You are certain to walk away with some great insights 
about India's affluent cultural inheritance on visiting this World UNESCO Heritage Site. Amcha Deshatya, come visit our country. Thank you, friends. Those monuments were indeed mesmerizing. Now, to develop a sense of commonness amongst us, I hand over the platform to Anagha so that we can know the similarities between Kazakhstan and India's culture. Thank you, Janvi. Good afternoon to one and all. Namaskar. Today, we are going to explore the commonness between the great nations through a story, the story of Arishri. So Arishri was a famous biracial YouTuber who was conducting a live Q&A session on her channel with her siblings and dad. Oh, a commenter asks, as you have shared so many memories of your childhood, do tell us some similarities. Well, relations between the people have ancient roots dating back to when the Saka tribes from the territory of modern Kazakhstan established a powerful empire in India. Some sources attribute to the Sak origin to the spiritual teacher and founder of Buddhism, Gautam Buddha, who had the title Shakyamuni, where Shakyamuni means the wisest among the Shakyas. An important person in Indian history is the famous Kazakh statesman of the Middle Ages, the scholar historian Muhammad Heather Dulati. In 2018, the Kazakh embassy in Delhi, with the support of the Archaeological Survey of India, reconstructed his grave in Srinagar city, in the state of Jabu and Kashmir. A placard with information in Urdu and English was installed near the cave. A significant role in consolidating the Delhi Sultanate, established at the beginning of the 13th century, was played by the Turkic military feudal nobility which originated from Central Asia. The Delhi Sultanate lasted 320 years and was the largest state in northern India. One of its founders was Qutb al-Din Ebak, representative of the Mamulk dynasty. Most sources mention Turkestan, a sacred region near Kazakhstan as his homeland. After answering the question, Arishri then reads another comment. Oh, I got another one asking the same but in terms of language and modern times. Dad, since you love books, you would tell some similarities in terms of languages. Mm, well, our shared root are also seen in our languages. Many common words also share the same meanings in the modern Kazakh and Hindi languages. The joint statement signed following Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's 2015 visit to Kazakhstan was known as Tez Kadam, which in both languages means quick step. After their father gives an important pointer regarding the answer, Nasser then says, Today, Kazakhstan and India are multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multilingual and secular societies as today. Noor Sultan and Delhi share similar positions on regional and global corporations and work closely within international and multilateral platforms. Kazakhstan is India's main trading partner in Central Asia. Kazakh Indian trade exceeds India's combined trade with other countries in our region. Then, Chair further adds pointers to the answer. Significant support in expanding this cooperation is provided by the honorary Kazakh consulates in India, which operate in Mumbai, Chennai and Gandhinagar. In recent years, the number of Indians visiting Kazakhstan and Kazakhs traveling to India have also increased. Soon, we expect Indian air carriers like SpiceJet and Indigo to launch more flights between Delhi and Almaty. Then Arishri further adds, Indian citizens transiting through Noor Sultan and Almaty can now stay in Kazakhstan visa-free for 72 hours. Kazakh citizens can also obtain electronic visas to visit India. In 2018, the embassy issued more than 25,000 visas to 
Indian citizen, which is four times more than in 2014. This name also holds the union of the nations as Ari was derived from our father Ari Bol's name, while our mum's name Srilata makes the other half. Your name Nazar also holds the very same meaning in both the countries as it was named after our family's amulet. In short, the collaboration between India and Kazakhstan would signify a country with one-sixth of the global population and deep historical roots to work and live alongside hard-working, sincere and kind-hearted people to develop friendship and cooperation between the two countries. Exactly. We would love to answer further questions, my dear commenters, but time is indeed a huge constraint. I will surely make another part of it. Hope you will enjoy the video as you are doing so right now with this one, with the overwhelming responses. Hope to see you guys soon. Over to Abhinit for a beautiful poem. Thank you. Uh, now the time for my poem. Our ours is a land of sages, known for bravery for ages. None can with it compete, its culture none can beat. Whatever caste or religion, all live here in unison. With rivers, sweet fountains, it's a land of high mountains. Its green forests are pretty and are source of prosperity. Let's for it work hard, for its safety be on guard. Jai Hind and do come to our country. Thank you, Abhinit. And thank you, everyone. And to our friends from Kazakhstan, we welcome you to visit India and enjoy the beautiful festivals with us. And take a look at the beautiful sights firsthand. Well, it was amazing hearing both sides speak with such great enthusiasm. Now, I request students from both the countries to take up the platform if they have any queries. Yes, Anagha, you can go ahead. So as I had seen, you know, the presentations, it was amazing. And I would surely love to go to Kazakhstan. So I think one thing I have noticed is that Kazakhstan offers a beauty of literature through the myriad of folk tales and legends. I would be more, you know, happy if one of you would, you know, share another legend or story regarding the origins of Kazakhstan or anything. Any student of Kazakhstan who would like to answer this question? Uh, first of all, we would like uh, to say thank you to all of you. Good afternoon, everyone, and namaskar uh, to my fellow students today. And uh, yes, it was really very really, uh, interesting interaction and we have learned a lot from the students there